The office had always been a place of routine, a predictable ebb and flow governed by the unspoken rules of corporate life. That was until Alex took the helm as the new manager. His arrival was like a cold gust of wind, unsettling the once calm waters of the office environment. On his first day, Alex convened a staff meeting, his eyes scanning the room with a mix of scrutiny and disdain. As of today, he began, his voice carrying a tone of unwavering authority, we're implementing changes. Efficiency is our new mantra, and unfortunately, that means adjustments to your compensation. Murmurs of disbelief and discontent began to ripple through the room, but Alex raised his hand, silencing the burgeoning uproar. Business is about survival of the fittest, he continued, a slight smirk playing on his lips, and I intend to ensure our survival. Sarah, a seasoned employee known for her dedication, stood up, her voice steady yet charged with emotion. Alex, we've all worked hard to contribute to this company's success. Cutting our salaries without warning isn't just unfair, it's disrespectful. Alex met her gaze, unflinching. Sarah, is it? Your dedication is noted, but sacrifices are necessary. The bottom line is non-negotiable. You'll find the new salary structure in your inboxes by the end of the day. The meeting ended with a palpable tension in the air. Resignation letters started flooding HR's inbox, a first one coming from Sarah herself. Those who stayed were either too paralyzed by the sudden shift or too entangled in personal obligations to leave. Late one evening, as the reduced staff toiled under the weight of doubled workloads, Alex walked through the dimly lit office, his footsteps echoing in the quiet. He paused by Tom's desk, observing the man's weary eyes fixed on the computer screen. Tom, Alex said, his voice softer, almost attempting empathy. I appreciate the extra hours. It shows commitment. Tom looked up, fatigue etched into his face. We're all doing what we can, Alex, but at what cost? Alex leaned against the desk, his expression contemplative. The cost of success, Tom, it's never easy, but it's always worth it. As Alex retreated to his office, the words felt hollow in Tom's ears. The new regime under Alex was not about shared success. It was a testament to a growing divide, a chasm between management and the workforce, fueled by decisions that valued profit over people. The office, once a collaborative hub, was now a battleground for survival, with Alex firmly at the helm. The departure of the janitor, a direct consequence of Alex's relentless cost-cutting measures, left the office in a state of slow decay. The once pristine floors were now dulled by layers of dust, and the air was tinged with the subtle but unmistakable scent of neglect. Mrs. Bennett, the HR manager, found herself at the forefront of this new battle. Her desk, piled with resumes and cleaning service brochures, was a testament to her futile search for a replacement willing to work for the meager salary Alex insisted upon. One particularly trying morning, as she sifted through yet another batch of inadequate candidates, Alex stormed into her office, his face clouded with the day's frustrations. Mrs. Bennett, this place is a mess. What's the point of all these meetings if I end up in an office that looks like a dump? Mrs. Bennett looked up, her patience wearing thin. I'm doing the best I can, Alex, but no one is willing to work for what you're offering. We need to reconsider the salary for the janitorial position. Alex leaned against the doorframe, his gaze stern. We've been over this. The budget is tight and every penny counts. Find someone, anyone. The tension between necessity and Alex's inflexibility continued to grow, creating an atmosphere of desperation. Mrs. Bennett's days were consumed by this impossible task, her office a revolving door of unsuitable candidates. One afternoon, as she sat at her desk, head in hands, Tom walked in, his expression one of concern. Mrs. Bennett, everyone's feeling the strain. Isn't there anything we can do? She looked up at Tom, her eyes weary. I've tried everything, but Alex won't budge on the salary. It's like he expects a miracle worker to walk through that door and accept peanuts for pay. Tom nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. We're all feeling the pinch, Mrs. Bennett. But maybe, just maybe, there's someone out there who needs us as much as we need them. Their conversation was a small comfort to Mrs. Bennett, a flicker of hope in an otherwise dim situation. But as each day passed with no solution in sight, the office's disarray became a glaring symbol of Alex's regime. A regime that prioritized cuts above all else, even the basic well-being of its environment and people. 
The office's decline into disarray reached its peak as the search for a new janitor remained fruitless. The once vibrant workspace was now a shell of its former self, the neglect evident in every corner and corridor. In the midst of this chaos, a routine morning meeting would soon take an unexpected turn. As Alex delivered his daily grievances about the state of the office, his frustration palpable, he peered out the window, his attention caught by a figure amidst the trash bins outside. A woman poorly dressed but moving with a sense of purpose was meticulously organizing the cardboard into neat stacks. Seizing what he saw as an opportunity, Alex turned to Mrs. Bennett with a sly grin. You see, Mrs. Bennett, there are people out there willing to work. You're just not looking in the right places. Mrs. Bennett, taken aback by Alex's sudden change in demeanor, could only watch in silence as he flung the window open and called out to the woman. His voice, laden with a false cheerfulness, echoed through the open space. Hey, come here for a minute. I have an offer you might want to hear. The woman, however, didn't respond, her focus unbroken as she continued with her task. Alex's initial amusement turned to irritation. He barked an order to Mrs. Bennett, get the security guard, now. When the security guard ushered the woman into the office, the staff's curiosity was piqued. They watched as Alex attempted to communicate with her, his voice growing louder with each failed attempt. It was only when the woman remained unresponsive that the reality of the situation became apparent. She was deaf. The revelation did little to deter Alex. Speaking slowly, exaggerating each syllable, he asked, Do you understand what I am saying? The woman, whom they would come to know as Emma, nodded, her expression one of cautious understanding. Do you want a job? You won't have to do much. Just clean the office. Alex finished, his tone patronizing. Emma's response was a silent nod, her agreement born out of necessity rather than choice. Alex, triumphant, turned to Mrs. Bennett with a smug look. See? It's not that hard. You just need to know how to motivate people. Mrs. Bennett, however, was not convinced. As Emma was led away to begin her new role, Mrs. Bennett caught a glimpse of something in Emma's eyes, a quiet determination that spoke volumes. She couldn't help but wonder about the story behind those eyes, the journey that had led Emma to this unlikely crossroads. As the days passed, Emma's presence in the office became a silent testament to resilience. Her diligent work began to transform the neglected spaces, her actions speaking louder than any words could. And while her arrival was marked by skepticism and a hint of exploitation, Emma would soon prove to be far more than just an unlikely candidate for the janitorial position. She was a reminder to all of the strength and dignity that often goes unnoticed in the shadows of society. Emma's integration into the office was met with a mixture of curiosity and indifference. Her silent world was a stark contrast to the bustling, often noisy environment of the workplace. Yet with each passing day, her presence became a constant, her diligent work transforming the once neglected spaces into spots of cleanliness and order. Her routine was simple but effective. She arrived early, often before anyone else, and began her day in quiet solitude, methodically cleaning each area with a precision that spoke of a deep personal pride in her work. Her silent footsteps and the soft swish of her cleaning tools became a familiar backdrop to the early morning hours. However, Emma's world of silence didn't shield her from the office dynamics. She was acutely aware of the whispers and laughter that sometimes followed her as she worked. One afternoon, as she was cleaning the break room, she overheard a conversation between two colleagues, Mark and Linda. Did you see how Alex brought her in? Like some sort of trophy, Mark snickered, not bothering to lower his voice. Linda, leaning against the counter with a cup of coffee in hand, replied, Yeah, and now she's here all the time, like a ghost. I heard she's deaf. Must be why she doesn't talk to anyone. Emma paused, her back to them, the rag in her hand momentarily still. The comments stung, a reminder of the barrier her deafness created between her and the world. Yet she resumed her work without a sign of acknowledgement, her resolve unshaken. It was during one of these moments that Tom approached her. He had observed her from a distance, impressed by her dedication and disturbed by the casual cruelty of some of their colleagues. Hi, Emma, he said, unsure if she could read his lips. I just wanted to say you're doing a great job. The place looks better than it has in months. Emma looked up, surprised. She studied his face for a moment, that a small smile broke through, 
a silent thank you that Tom understood perfectly. It was a small interaction, but for Emma, it was a significant one. It was a recognition of her efforts, a moment of connection in her otherwise isolated world. As the days turned into weeks, Emma's silent world began to intersect more with those around her. Her presence, once an object of curiosity and sometimes ridicule, started to earn a grudging respect. The clean, well-organized spaces she left in her wake became appreciated, her silent dedication a quiet rebuke to the pettiness and laziness that sometimes pervaded the office environment. Yet for Emma, the office was just a part of her world. Her real sanctuary was her home, a small, modest space on the outskirts of town where she lived with her beloved pets. It was there, in the company of her furry companions, that Emma found true solace and joy. Her pets didn't care about her deafness, they responded to her kindness and care with unconditional love, providing her with a sense of belonging and acceptance that was often lacking in her interactions with people. In her silent world, Emma moved with grace and resilience, her life a testament to the strength that lies in quiet determination and the power of kindness in the face of adversity. Emma's impact on the office was not just confined to its physical cleanliness. Unbeknownst to her colleagues, she was about to leave an indelible mark on its operational success as well. Her hidden talents, overlooked and underestimated, were poised to come to light in an unexpected manner. Late one evening, after the office had emptied and the quiet hum of the night settled in, Emma found herself lingering over a discarded report on business development strategies. Her interest was piqued not just by the content, but by the potential she saw in the neglected ideas it contained. Emma's education and past experiences had equipped her with a keen business acumen, a fact that her current position as a janitor did not reflect. The report, flawed and incomplete as it was, sparked an idea in her. With meticulous care, she began to draft her own enhancements and revisions, her pen moving confidently across the paper. The following morning, Tom arrived early, surprised to find Emma already at work, surrounded by papers filled with graphs, charts, and annotations. What's all this? He asked, his curiosity piqued by the unexpected sight. Emma looked up, her expression a mix of concentration and slight apprehension. She hesitated, unsure of how to communicate the breadth of her work through the barrier of her deafness. Finally, she pushed a sheet of paper towards him, her revisions and suggestions clearly outlined. Tom scanned the document, his initial surprise turning to admiration. Emma, this is incredible. Did you do all this? Emma nodded, a hint of pride in her eyes, mixed with a touch of vulnerability. The risk of exposing her talents was significant, given her current position and the office dynamics. Recognizing the value of Emma's work, Tom made a decision. I'll make sure this gets seen, he assured her, his voice firm with resolve. True to his word, Tom presented Emma's revisions at the next team meeting, carefully omitting her involvement. The response was overwhelmingly positive, with many colleagues impressed by the depth of insight and innovation the document contained. Alex, intrigued by the sudden surge in productivity and creativity, sought out the source. Tom, this work is exceptional. It's exactly what we've needed to push forward. Where did you get these ideas? Tom hesitated, caught in a moral quandary. Revealing Emma's role could expose her to unwanted scrutiny or exploitation by Alex, yet taking full credit felt deeply wrong. It was a team effort, he deflected, hoping to shield Emma while acknowledging her contributions. As the office buzzed with renewed energy and focus, Emma continued her work in silence, her contributions known to only a few. Her hidden talents, though unrecognized by many, had quietly steered the office towards a path of recovery and growth. Emma's story was a testament to the often overlooked potential that lies within each individual, a reminder that talent and capability are not always where we expect to find them. In the quiet of the night, with only the moon as her witness, Emma had proven that even the most unassuming among us can harbor the power to affect change. As the office began to thrive with newfound efficiency and morale, the seeds of Alex's undoing were quietly being sown. The sudden improvement in office performance, sparked by Emma's hidden contributions, had not gone unnoticed by the higher echelons of the company. Oliver, the company's CEO, decided to pay a surprise visit to the office, intrigued by the reports of turnaround he had been receiving. His arrival sent a ripple of tension through the workspace, with Alex feeling the pressure most acutely. 
Alex, I must say, I'm impressed with the changes around here. Oliver began, his keen eyes missing nothing as they swept over the office. What's your secret? Alex, ever the opportunist, seized the moment to bask in the undeserved glory. It's all about leadership, Oliver. Setting the right tone, motivating the team, cutting the dead weight. Oliver nodded, though his expression remained unreadable. I see. And what about this remarkable business development plan I've been hearing about? That was your handiwork as well. Alex, emboldened by Oliver's interest, claimed full credit. Yes, it took some long nights, but I believe in leading by example. Unbeknownst to Alex, Oliver's visit had another purpose. Alarmed by the drastic measures Alex had taken early in his tenure, Oliver had installed hidden surveillance to monitor the office dynamics. What he discovered through the footage was a revelation that would spell the end for Alex's deceitful reign. Late one evening, as the office lay silent and deserted, Oliver sat in his home office, reviewing the surveillance footage. His attention was caught by the figure of Emma, working diligently long after her cleaning duties should have ended. The footage showed her poring over reports, her pen flying over pages, crafting the very strategies Alex had claimed as his own. The next day, Oliver confronted Alex in a meeting room, the tension palpable. Alex, about the business plan, there seems to be some confusion about its origin. Care to explain? Alex, sensing a trap but unsure of its nature, doubled down on his lie. I'm not sure what you mean, Oliver. Like I said, it was all me. Oliver then turned his laptop to face Alex, playing a clip of the surveillance footage showing Emma at work on the business plan. Interesting because it sure looks like Emma, our janitor, is the real architect of our recent success. Alex's facade crumbled, his face paling as he realized the extent of his exposure. Oliver, I can explain. It's not what it looks like. But Oliver had seen enough. Save it, Alex. Your deception has cost this office dearly. Not only did you claim someone else's work as your own, but you've also been a divisive and destructive force. The unraveling of Alex was swift, Stripped of his position and escorted from the building, his departure marked the end of a tumultuous chapter for the office. In the wake of his exit, a sense of relief and optimism filled the air, a collective sense that the worst was over and a new, more positive era was beginning. Emma, her role in Alex's downfall known only to a few, continued her work with the same quiet dedication. Yet, in the eyes of those who knew the truth, her silent presence held a new level of respect and gratitude, a silent acknowledgement of her pivotal role in reshaping the future of the office. In the aftermath of Alex's departure, the office environment underwent a palpable change. The air was lighter, the staff more relaxed, and a sense of camaraderie began to rebuild. It was during this time of transition that Tom, who had become a quiet ally to Emma, learned of her complex and poignant backstory. One evening, as the last hues of sunset bathed the office in a soft glow, Tom found Emma sitting alone in the break room, her hands wrapped around a mug of tea. Seizing the moment, he decided to bridge the gap between them. Emma, Tom began his voice gentle. I hope you don't mind me saying, but I've noticed all the good you've done around here. It's, it's really made a difference. Emma looked up, her expression one of mild surprise, before a small, appreciative smile crossed her face. She nodded, acknowledging his words. Encouraged, Tom continued, I was wondering, I mean, if you're willing to share, I'd like to know more about you, your insights, the work you did on the business plan. It's clear you're much more than a janitor. Emma hesitated, her eyes reflecting a wariness born of past hurts, but something in Tom's sincere expression seemed to reassure her. She set down her mug, her hands moving in fluid sign language. Tom watched, fascinated but unable to understand. Realizing this, Emma reached for a notepad and pen nearby and began to write. I wasn't always deaf, her note began, the words stark in their simplicity. I grew up loving books, learning, and I dreamed of running a business one day. Tom read her words, his interest deepening. What happened? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper, mindful of the personal nature of his question. Emma paused, her pen hovering over the paper before she continued. There was an accident, a car crash. I lost more than my hearing that day. I lost my fiancé, Connor, and with him, my dreams. The revelation hit Tom like a physical blow. He could scarcely imagine the depth of her loss. I'm so sorry, Emma, he said, his voice laden with empathy. 
Emma offered a sad smile, her next words a testament to her resilience. Life challenges us in ways we can never expect. I've learned to find new dreams, smaller perhaps, but mine nonetheless. Moved by her strength and grace, Tom felt a renewed sense of respect for Emma. Thank you for sharing that with me. I, I just want you to know you're not alone here. We see you and we value you. Emma's eyes glistened with unched tears touched by Tom's words. She wrote one last note for the night. Thank you, Tom. That means more to me than you can know. As they parted ways that evening, a bond forged in mutual respect and understanding. Tom couldn't help but feel that the office, their little community had taken a significant step forward. Emma's backstory, a poignant reminder of the unseen battles many face, had not only opened Tom's eyes, but had also sown the seeds of a deeper, more inclusive office culture. In the weeks following Alex's departure, the office thrived like a garden after a long drought. The oppressive atmosphere he had cultivated was replaced by a spirit of cooperation and innovation. It was during this period of positive transformation that Emma's talents, once hidden in the shadows, began to receive the recognition they deserved. One crisp morning, Oliver, the CEO, made an unannounced visit to the office. The staff, now accustomed to his presence in the wake of the recent of Hevels, greeted him with a mixture of respect and anticipation. Oliver's gaze, however, was fixed on Emma, who was quietly going about her duties. Emma, Oliver called out, his voice echoing slightly in the open space. The room fell silent, all eyes turning towards them. Emma looked up, surprised to be addressed directly. Oliver continued, his tone warm yet curious. Tom has shared with me the remarkable work you've been doing, not just in keeping this place spotless, but also your contributions to our business strategy. I'm intrigued. Would you join me for a moment? The staff watched in stunned silence as Emma, her face a mask of cautious surprise, nodded and followed Oliver into a meeting room. Tom, catching Emma's eye as she passed, offered an encouraging smile. Once seated, Oliver began, Emma, your story is both moving and inspiring. Your resilience, your talent, it's exactly what this company needs. I'd like to offer you a new position, one where you can truly make a difference. Emma, her hands trembling slightly, picked up a pen and wrote, I'm honored, but I'm not sure I'm qualified for anything beyond what I'm doing now. Oliver smiled, shaking his head. On the contrary, Emma, your insights, your dedication, You've shown more leadership and vision than many in positions far above yours. I'm offering you a role as a project coordinator to start with. What do you say? Emma's eyes widened, a mix of emotions playing across her face. After a moment, she wrote, yes, I would like that very much. Thank you. As word of Emma's promotion spread through the office, a collective sense of pride and excitement took hold. The staff, once divided and demoralized, now found themselves united in a shared narrative of redemption and hope. Linda, one of Emma's early skeptics, approached her later that day. Emma, I, I want to apologize for any unkindness I've shown. Your strength is something I truly admire. Emma read Linda's note, her expression softening. She wrote back, thank you, Linda. Let's look forward to better days. The chapter of Emma's recognition and redemption marked a turning point for the office. Her journey from the periphery to a position of influence was a testament to the power of resilience, talent, and the human spirit's capacity for growth. In Emma's story, the office found not just a beacon of hope, but a mirror reflecting their collective potential for transformation and renewal. The office had undergone a remarkable transformation, much of which could be attributed to Emma's unique blend of leadership. Her approach, characterized by empathy, inclusivity, and a sharp business acumen, had not only revitalized the team's productivity, but also fostered a sense of belonging and purpose among the staff. Emma's desk, once a mere station for her janitorial duties, had become a hub of innovation and collaboration. Her colleagues, who had once underestimated her, now sought her insights and guidance on various projects. One bright morning, as the office buzzed with the day's activities, Oliver made his way to Emma's desk, a warm smile on his face. Emma, he greeted, I've been hearing great things about the new community outreach program you've initiated. It's exactly the kind of innovative thinking we need. Emma looked up, her eyes lighting up with enthusiasm. Thank you, Oliver. I believe it's important we use our platform to give back to the community to create a positive impact beyond these walls. 
Oliver nodded in agreement, his admiration for Emma growing. And speaking of positive impacts, I've been meaning to discuss something with you, something close to your heart. Emma's curiosity was piqued. She leaned in attentive. I know how passionate you are about animal care, Oliver continued, and I've been thinking about how we can support that passion. Emma was touched by Oliver's thoughtfulness. That would be wonderful, Oliver. There's so much we can do, so many animals in need of care and protection. That's exactly what I was thinking, Oliver said, his voice filled with excitement. How would you feel about leading a company-sponsored animal welfare initiative? It could be a way for us to extend our outreach and make a meaningful difference. Emma was momentarily speechless, overwhelmed by the gesture. I, that would be incredible, Oliver. I'd be honored. As the plans for the animal welfare initiative took shape, Emma found herself at the heart of a project that fused her professional and personal passions. The initiative not only aimed to provide support and resources to local animal shelters, but also to raise awareness about animal rights and welfare within the community. The launch event for the initiative was a testament to Emma's vision and leadership. Colleagues and community members alike gathered to support the cause, their enthusiasm and generosity exceeding all expectations. Tom, who had been a constant ally, approached Emma during the event, a proud smile on his face. Look at what you've achieved, Emma. You've turned this office around, and now you're using that same spirit to help those who can't speak for themselves. Emma, her heart full, looked around at the bustling event, at the faces of those united for a common cause. We did this together, Tom. It's amazing what we can achieve when we work towards something bigger than ourselves. The event was a resounding success, marking the beginning of a new chapter not just for Emma, but for the entire office. Under her leadership, they had become more than just a team. They had become a community driven by a shared purpose and a commitment to making a difference, both within and beyond the office walls. This new beginning was a reflection of Emma's journey, a journey that had come full circle. From the depths of personal loss to finding new purpose and community, her story was a powerful reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the transformative power of compassion and leadership. As the seasons changed, so too did the lives of those within the office, none more so than Emma. Her journey, intertwined with the fortunes of the office, had become a source of inspiration to all. But beyond professional success, her personal life too was flourishing, particularly her relationship with Oliver. One serene evening, as they walked through the newly established community garden adjacent to the office, a project inspired by Emma's vision for a greener, more connected community. Oliver stopped and turned to Emma, his eyes reflecting the golden hues of the setting sun. Emma, he began, his voice tinged with emotion. From the moment you walked into our lives, you've brought nothing but positivity, strength, and inspiration. You've changed this office, you've changed the community, and most importantly, you've changed me. Emma, taken aback by the depth of his words, felt a warmth spreading through her heart. Oliver continued, taking her hands in his. I can't imagine a future without you by my side. Emma, will you marry me? Tears of joy welled in Emma's eyes as she nodded, her heart overflowing with happiness. Yes, Oliver, yes, I will. Their wedding, held in the very garden they had nurtured together, was a celebration of love, community, and new beginnings. It was attended by colleagues, friends, and family, all of whom had been touched in some way by Emma's incredible journey. But life had more surprises in store for Emma. A few months after their wedding, she experienced what could only be described as a miracle. Gradually, her hearing began to return, a development that left her doctors baffled but overjoyed. For Emma, it was as if the final piece of her life's puzzle had fallen into place, restoring a sense she had long thought lost. With her hearing restored, Emma embraced her new life with even greater zeal. She and Oliver, who had been her steadfast supporter, now looked forward to the arrival of their first child, a symbol of their love and shared hopes for the future. One day as they stood in the nursery they had lovingly prepared, Oliver wrapped his arms around Emma, his voice soft with emotion. I can't believe how far we've come, Emma. You've brought so much light into our lives. Emma, her hand resting on her growing belly, turned to face him, her smile radiant. We've come full circle, Oliver. From hardship to joy, from silence to a world filled with sounds and love. I'm so grateful for this journey for you and for our little one on the way. 
Their conversation was a reflection of their journey together from colleagues to soulmates, bound by shared experiences and a deep abiding love. In a fitting tribute to Emma's passion for animal welfare, Oliver surprised her by purchasing the local animal shelter, ensuring that Emma could continue her advocacy and care for animals in need. The shelter, renamed Emma's Haven, became a sanctuary for animals and a symbol of hope and second chances. As Emma and Oliver stood in front of Emma's Haven, the sign bearing its new name being unveiled, Emma felt a profound sense of fulfillment. Her life, once marked by loss and silence, was now a symphony of love, family, and purpose. This chapter of Full Circle was not just an end to Emma's hardships, but a celebration of new beginnings, of dreams realized, and of a future filled with promise and joy. It was a testament to the power of love, resilience, and the unwavering belief that even in our darkest moments, there is always a light waiting to guide us home.